This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. I saw a very nice midrash that is asking about the hidden light that is waiting for the righteous ones. The Creator, He created the world, used His light, and when the first generations came, they already sabotaged, destroyed every good thing that, uh, that, was, uh, that exists. So the Creator decided to hide that light. He felt like that light is too, too good to be true. It's, it's too gentle and if people will use it in, in a wrong way, they can just uh, like destroy too much, can ruin too much. So he decided to hide that light and to keep it for the righteous ones, the ones that will have the merit, that will be able to deal with that light, will be worthy for that light, to enjoy from it in the future, in the next generations. So only individuals, once in a while, are able to see and to enjoy that light. And most of us, we like, we don't even know what we're talking about, which hidden light, like the LED, like what, where the fluorescent, we like, no. Something we don't know. Something that makes you able to see things that common people are not able to see. To understand one thing from another in hidden ways, in mysterious ways. Things that like, we don't know. Now, the Midrash is saying, okay, but what will those righteous ones will do? Where will they find that light? That's what, that's what the Midrash is asking. When those righteous ones, those worthy ones, will find that light, where will they find it? So the Midrash is answering, while they're learning Torah, they're going to find it in the Torah, it's hidden in the Torah. And then the Midrash is asking, and if they won't be able to learn Torah, like maybe there's going to come a time that they won't be able to learn Torah. Even righteous people, you know, they have families, they have errands, they have like, they need to go to Disney, like, like every righteous man, like <laughs> once in a lifetime, you cannot like not visit Disney. So even righteous people, they like, sometimes they cannot learn Torah. So in that time that they're not learning Torah, how they will enjoy that hidden light, how they will find it, where they will find it, if not from the Torah. So the Midrash is answering, they will find it in the way of the land. They will find it in the way they're walking, while they're like walking and traveling in Disney. Like they'll find it in Disney. <laughs> the Midrash is saying that they can find it in Disney. How can it be? And what does it mean? First of all, when the Creator created the world, so how did He create the world? It's written that the Creator looked at the Torah and been inspired by what He saw in the Torah and then He created the world based on what that He saw in the Torah. Means that the world is reflecting the Torah, the Bible, what that's written in the Bible and the wisdom that is passing between one generation to the next by the righteous ones that are transforming, transforming the wisdom from one generation to the next. The Torah is passing and you can also see the reflection of the Torah in the world. So for an example, a righteous man that is able to sense the spirit of Hashem that can see that hidden light when he is looking at a tree, when he is having a conversation with a person, he can see the root that that situation is coming from the Torah, in the Torah. Where that situation is hinted, is coming from, in the verses, in the ancient scripts, in the will of Hashem. It's not only what I'm going to do in this case, what I should do, also, who am I in the secret 
of my creation. Who is he? Am I coming from the side of tribes of Israel? Maybe in that situation I can find myself that I'm Pharaoh compared to that poor guy that he's representing Israel. In every situation you can find Torah, not only when you learn Torah. Now, for us in our generation, that we are all facing those obstacles and challenges that we should visit Disney at least one time in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. We must understand how to take out those buckets of Torah, of wisdom, of that hidden light from life. Because you cannot always sit and learn Torah, you cannot always sit and sing Tehillim, you cannot always standing and praying. Life takes you out from the Beit Midrash, from the synagogue, to the streets, to the kindergartens, to your obligations, to your daily errands. You must function in, in, in the world, but you don't want to miss the light. You don't want to miss the potential that life can provide you, can give you, can offer you. So you should learn how to bring it out, to pull it out from life. How you do that? It's written that that light is hidden and waiting for those righteous ones. So we should become righteous for that. For sure evil people, ignorant people, silly people are not that those ones that are able to enjoy that hidden light. You should answer to that um, title of being righteous in a way. And it's written and your nation of Israel, they're all righteous. Sounds like a joke, right? Like it's hilarious. Funny. The funniest verse ever. Like, where is it written? In the yellow pages? Like, where? Which commercial? Where? Like, what do you mean? All of Am Israel are righteous. Nice. Also that guy, like, Yeshu, righteous, yeah, <laughs> stem, kosher, badat tzedak no doubt, kosher, tzaddik, not kosher, righteous, pure, amazing. No, it's a joke, no, it's a verse. You have to deal with that verse. You must understand what's the real meaning of that verse. Because really to say, oh yeah, they're all so righteous, it's a joke, like you have criminals, like between us, like, if not me, like, <laughs> if not you, when you look at the mirror, like, and you judge yourself, and like, you find yourself in certain situations, like I said before, it, it doesn't mean you are Pharaoh, but in certain situations, if you find yourself like being too hard on your children, too hard on your wife, like so, you are in the aspect of Pharaoh compared to those young ones, compared to the, that gentle person that stands in front of you, that... You cannot be hard, you cannot be harsh, you cannot abuse. You, like, in an aspect, you can find yourself that you're not righteous. So, to which aspect of our life that verse is, is referring? To tell us that we're all righteous. And also, to make this question even deeper and even harder to answer, when we are calling all of Am Israel righteous, we're not saying, and all the Jews are righteous. We're saying all the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel, we're talking about 12 tribes. Israel is not only the name of the tribe of Judah, that those are the Jewish people that we are part of. Okay, I'm Jewish, I'm Israeli. No, not only you. Also, the last 10 tribes are also Am Israel. And they are for sure not as righteous as you would think that they should be because part of them will be related to different religions as of today. Part of them can even hate Am Israel today and don't even know that they're also part of Am Israel. Like we saw that there were neo-Nazis that after 20 years of, of being so radical suddenly realized, oh, they were Jewish and like, oh, that was like... Now, now you have to deal with, with your new reality, like face the fact. So you have people today that lives in different cultures, in different states, completely disconnected from all of Jewish tradition and, 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 and from all 
attributes and, and, and ways of, of manners like we would, would describe as holy and right and like we're going to say the righteous ones are holding and keeping those obligations. They're so far from it. Like they can have many wives, they can like hate their children, beat their children, like different cultures. They can live in the desert somewhere, I don't know where, like different foreign ways of, of manners and behavior. So how can we tell that that verse is saying the truth. How can it be? Only if you go back to the root of our creation. Only if you go into the depths of our spirits, if you judge the person favorably, completely, ignoring completely from his manners, completely from his behaviors, only then when you look deep into the roots of his soul, you can say on that person, he is righteous. Because every single one of us, and even those ones that are working hard to fix ourselves as much as we can, we're failing on a daily basis. We're failing with our beloved ones on a daily basis. No one is able to hold on, always righteous, always pure, always holy, always amazing, always inspiring, all, always illuminating, always shining. It doesn't work like that. Even Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that he was the righteous one that came to offer potions and cures and medicines to the lowest level of our people. He opened the gates of tshuva and offered a new opportunity to those ones that are in the four wings of the world. He went to the lowest places of them all and called people to come back. Even he said that if you want to be a kosher person, you must go through thousands of up and downs in your life. Like there is no way out from this crazy roller coaster of life. You want to have to climb and fall, climb and fall, up and down, up and down, all of your life if you want really to be purified. If you want to find yourself clean in the end of the day. Like a washing machine. You cannot just throw the, clothing, the clothes into the bucket with water and after a couple of days it will be clean. If you're not going to rub it, if you're not going to put it into those crazy circles for half an hour in crazy heat, of fresh water with soap and like everything that is needed for the filth to leave the fibers, the, 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 the fabric, there is no way out for the filth except of through those struggles. And those are our life experiences. And in those hours, we can recognize the hidden light that is waiting for those righteous ones. In those life experiences, when we are facing the ups and when we are facing the downs, when we're hitting the brick wall, when we are finding ourselves in front of an obstacle that we don't have no understanding how to deal with, not to climb above it, it's impossible, not to pass it from the right, not from the left, and to go through it, it's like you find yourself stuck in front of reality. In those moments, you can find that hidden light. How? Like we said, only if you're going to ignore your physicality completely and going to judge yourself favorably with no end and you will stare only to the roots of your soul and you're going to ignore everything that you see, all the judgments. All the defaults, all the defects, all the filth, all the crimes, all the sins, all your past, all your patterns, all your way of behaviors, all your way of reactions, all your way of thinking. You're going to drop it all and just going to focus in the secret of your creation. Hey, you know who am I? I am a godly portion, I'm a chelek, a loka mimal, even though that I'm crazy, even though that I'm lost, even though that I failed, even though that I'm like a lunatic, even though that I'm sick in my mind and I don't know my name, I don't know where my house is, I lost my, my, my ID, I don't know the number of my shoes, I'm running barefoot. Today my wife told me, my wife. 
your wife. You don't know. But one day, one day the world will know. So, <laughs> moving. Another direction. Today we spoke, and we, and we spoke about difficulties in life, and we spoke about challenges in life, and we spoke about like crazy things in life, and suddenly we see this Los Angeles random person driving his bike against the, 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 the driving direction, like the, in the opposite direction, like cars are driving in this direction, and he is driving against them, like, and he was so wildly happy, like, <laughs> you saw it, like, I know for sure, you live here, you, you, you're, you're used to those kind of experience, we never saw something that crazy, but today the world opened our eyes to see, like, he was so wildly, crazily happy, while driving his bike in the opposite direction, that if he was not connected to something divine, so I don't know what was his source of happiness. Like, I would be terrified if I would be in his situation. I would be lost. Like, I would fall down to the... I would scream for help. Like, and he was shining and blooming. He was making it big time. Like, he was... He was somewhere else, so <laughs> it's true. He used something to reach that level. We don't need to use those things to reach that level. But even though that he used that level, he used something to reach that level, still the fact that he reached some level is an enough of an evidence for us that that level exists somewhere. For an example, I know a person, was a friend of mine maybe 25 years ago, that he once took LSD in, in, in a party, too much, but the good result was that he decided to do chuba in the end of that party. Like, everyone were partying, everything was wonderful, was swell, everyone were happy, and we never saw him again. And he didn't die. He just decided to move to Beitar, it's a religious village in, in, in Israel, and we never saw him again, like he just disappeared. So from the most colorful and, 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 and open wild nature party, he found himself in the Jewish ghetto, finding a new path in life. So it's true that you don't want to send your child for a summer camp in those woods where we were dancing. But the result in the end was that that guy, through that illusion that took place in his mind because of consuming LSD, he saw God. Now, you're going to say yes, you're going to say no, that can be your opinion. And I couldn't care less about that. But you should understand that the Creator used that amount of LSD to save that kid from taking it again. He took him out and he brought him into the arms of Torah and he brought him to a religious community of someone that was familiar to him from one of the sides of his family that was able to hug him and to heal him. And the Creator knew the path. The Creator designed that way. No one in the world can say, hey, so you should try LSD. No one can say that. No one can uh, really like guide a person which drugs he should take to achieve I don't know what. But the Creator, he does. He knows. The Creator, he knows exactly what each and every one of us should experience to wake up. And one needs to find himself in a party, another one needs to find himself in a car accident, another person can enjoy a fantastic view and a huge miracle that took place in his life to open his eyes. But the way to recognize that godliness, to understand those hints, to find that hidden light for the righteous ones, is only when you're reaching to that place that you are dropping your body and all your lusts and desires. Because as long as you are slavered, you're a slave of all your fears, of all of the physical world, 
that is all over you with the obligations and with the commitments and with the needs and with the pressure of the daily, the daily obligations, you cannot find God. You're lost. And even if you keep an observant way of life, and even if you're keeping Shabbat, and even if you're eating kosher, you cannot find Hashem over there. You're going to go to the synagogue, you're going to read in the books, you're going to function as a Jewish person, you're going to cover yourself, you're going to pray, you're going to read from the Siddur, but Hashem is elsewhere. Hashem is not available for you until you reach to that moment that you say to yourself, Hey, I must find myself. I need to go somewhere quiet. I need to find a way to reconnect myself to who I am. Before you come into that inner place of yourself, you cannot be in touch with the Creator. You can function as religious you can work as an Orthodox Jew. You can pretend to be, I don't know what. In reality, if you will look at yourself, you will see that you are disconnected. Because if when you're standing in the synagogue and you're holding the Siddur and you want to pray and you hold the Siddur and suddenly a person over there is talking on the phone and it's bothering you, it means that you're disconnected. It means that something is breaking your connection to the Siddur, to the prayer. If you now want to be modest, and when other people are walking in a different way in the street, they're bothering you from being who you want to be, it means that you're disconnected. It means that something is de de destroying your reception. Something is breaking your connection with heaven. Because if your connection to heaven is your modesty, it's your prayer, it's your learning. So when you're learning, when you're praying, when you're acting modestly, so you should be connected. Nothing can interfere. Nothing, nothing's supposed to break your connection. But if it's breaking your connection, it means, first of all, that your connection is weak. So we're going to give you the password for our Wi-Fi. It's Emuna with an H in the end. Why with an H? That you won't forget Hashem. You know there is Emuna without an H? You can forget Hashem. Emuna with an H, with Hashem, you cannot forget Hashem. You need to connect yourself to Hashem, not only to His commandments, not only to the rules. If there's going to be an evil person that will put filin, he won't be rewarded. If his evil tea, if his anger is bringing him, like, I'm sorry for the horrible example, Nazis that took off filin from heads of Jews and took pictures with it on their heads. Now, will they be rewarded on putting tefillin? Of course not. Why? Because not the desire to keep the mitzvah or the love to the Creator brought them to do that. Their evil and negative sense of humor, their craziness brought them to do that horrible act of abusing Jews like that. So they won't be rewarded. They will be punished on putting tefillin on their heads because they were not called to do that. They were not invited and blessed to do that. So in a much less radical way, when a person is doing things without a heart, without a desire to connect himself to Hashem, so he is still disconnected. Even though that he can look so from religious, orthodox, everyone, we went out from the place, the Airbnb that we stayed in Pico. We are walking in the streets. Haredim, religious people, orthodox, Black jackets, white shirts, long beards coming out of their houses and they're doing whatever it takes not to look at us in our faces. Not that they won't accidentally gonna have to say Shalom Aleichem. So why? Why? It's not that they know me and they have a problem with me. They are just in a way choosing to be so narrow-minded and to protect themselves and not to blend and not to... I don't know what! I cannot even understand like the, the craziness of like why can't you just... you open your door, you see 
a crazy person with his five ninjas walking in the street. <laughs> like, can't you just say, hi, like, what's the problem? Say, shalom, shalom ale, what's the problem? Like, we're here, we're tourists, like, we're lost. What's your problem? Can't you smile? Hi. Yeah, you're right. First time we came to New York, I said to my wife, you know what? We must make a video on that. And we took the camera. In the end, we didn't use that video, but we made a video. We walked with the camera in the streets and we're going, Brooklyn, New York, walking in the street and saying to people, Shalom Aleichem, <laughs> hi, how are you? No respond. Wow. Because oh they can't God. hear because of the wind. There's oh. a storm now in New York. <laughs> You're being funny. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, am, yeah. I am. You're being sarcastic. I am very sarcastic. Yeah. Yes, you got it. It's a lawyer fair. It's a lawyer fair. No. It's not nice. But it's reality. You have people that find it hard to say hi, to say Shalom Aleichem. So, still, again, even though that I sound like I am criticizing, like I'm saying something negative, I can understand why people are suffering, why people are scared, why people are afraid. I can find myself also that sometimes I want to bury my head and to hide myself in the ground and I don't want to face people. Every person can find himself in this situation. But, not as a way of life. As a way of life, we need to be open. As a way of life, we need to be invited. And if you are scared that someone's going to interfere, that someone's going to interrupt, that someone's going to destroy your connection, so I'm telling you, warning you, trying to help you, it means that your connection is weak. That's why you're scared. In the beginning of my tshuva, I said to my wife, listen, we must move to a religious neighborhood. We must. The only reason for that was that I was not sure that I will be able to hold on religious with all the negative, what that I called negative influence from my sides, from my family, from my old friends, that they will attack me from, for trying to be religious. So I was so scared because I recognized my weakness. So I had to convince my wife, let's move to an orthodox neighborhood because I felt that that area will protect me. But still, even though that it sounds good, okay, if you're aware to your weaknesses, so it's a good thing to connect yourself to people like you to move to a religious area, you're right. But I'm warning you, if you are building your connection with heaven based on external things like community, like people, like friends, like rabbis, like books, when you're gonna lose that book, or lose that rabbi, or lose the connection to that community, you're gonna lose your connection. But when you're gonna connect yourself from within to the Creator, and you're gonna have an inner connection with your God, with your parent, with your Father in Heaven, when you and Him gonna walk together to the synagogue, gonna open the books together, when you will remember Him while you walk, while you talk, while you drink, while you eat, while you sleep, while you take in a shower in your own house alone in the middle of the night, you're gonna remember the divine God that He gives you life, Nothing in the world will cut your connection. They can close your books. They can kick you out of shul. They cannot let you into their neighborhood. They can excommunicate. I don't know what. You will walk with heaven. You will walk with God. Nothing will separate you. When your connection is inner, when your connection is inner, even if difficulties of life will pile like mountains around you, you will stay connected. Every person, like we said, must go through thousands of up and downs in his life. It's a must. That's the way to Jerusalem. To those ones of you that ever visit in Jerusalem, there is only one way to Jerusalem. Many, many ways, many, many lanes, many, many directions to go to the Jerusalem. They all look the same. Mountains surrounding Jerusalem. You have to go up and down, up and down, up and down, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Means to succeed and to fail, to go up and to go down. And sometimes you find yourself with your face to the south, 
south and sometimes you find yourself with your face to the north and Jerusalem is supposed to be in the east and you're lost. But you must continue because the road will take you another left and then another up and another down. And if you're not going to stop, only if you're not going to stop, you're going to hit the place. You're going to find the place your heart desired. You're going to make it to Zion, to the holy city, to the place of the temple, to the mount of the house of the Holy One, to the house of prayer that will be the house of prayer to all nations, that everyone will call Him in His name. You cannot expect people to be righteous. You cannot expect people to be I don't know what, because people are coming from all around the world. People are coming from hell A. People are coming from the lowest places in the world and they're seeking for Hashem. I had to remove tattoos in the beginning of my tshuva and I was born in Jerusalem in, in um, what's the name of that, in Haratzofim. Like one mile from the place of the temple, that's where I born. And I had to remove three gigantic tattoos in the beginning of my tshuva. So I don't want to dream even of what you need to go through. That you were born in Tarzana. Oh, like you need to remove Tarzan from your heart. Like I don't know how you do that. Like oh, like how you how you gonna take Cheetah out of your like your mind? Wow. Like he's, he's all over you. Oh my God, you're done. <laughs> In the first Shabbat that we spent in, in Los Angeles, in the first time that we've been to Los Angeles, so a friend hosted us here in Tarzana, and while we were walking in the street, like in the, no sidewalks, which are like you go on the, on, the, on the road, and some person stopped and she told us, you know what the name of the neighborhood is Tarzana? Because the <laughs> author the wrote Tarzan, he lived here and this, like all that, we know the story, like everything. They shot the movies here, that's how common. There's a movie, what? They used to shoot the Tarzan movies so they had a set in this area. No, so maybe okay. that's the way to, to uproot Tarzan from our hearts. <laughs> Tarzan. The jungle's right here. <laughs> So in reality, the only way to connect ourselves really, truly to heaven is to try to connect ourselves in every moment of our life with no connection to our environment, to our reality, to our spiritual level, I don't know what. For an example, I'll give you. If there is a person, like I said before, if there is a person that is evil in putting filin, that fact that he puts filin won't consider a reward, a mitzvah for him. He won't be rewarded on it at all. It's not his merits at all. If there is a person that he is reading the Gemara, he sits and running and, and reading pages and pages of, of Torah, of Gemara every day, but he, the person himself, is a filthy person. He's an evil person. Like he's a liar. He hates people. He, like, he makes wars with everyone, always arguing, always getting into things that he's not belong to, talking Lashon Hara. So, like, What's the use of his learning hours and hours every day? He won't be rewarded on that. And you can see on that person that the learning is also not, not blessing him. It doesn't help him even. Like after 60 years and he's keep on yapping and talking and like filthing his mouth with stupid and silly ideas. Like close the book. Let's go outside. There we can talk. Like... Why here? Why in the Beit Midrash? Why with open books? Like it's so disconnected. So you see that the most amazing thing in the world, sit all day and learn Torah, it doesn't help when the inner will of the person is elsewhere, is, is in the opposite direction. Look at a regular person disconnected from Torah and mitzvot. He doesn't know anything about it. He never been taught about Shabbat, the importance of Kashrut. He doesn't have no connection to the mitzvot. He doesn't aware, he's not aware to the obligation at all. He doesn't live in that, in that aspect of, he's boating, he's sailing, he's fishing, he's eating, he's drinking. He's like, he lives his life. He has his small business and everything is good. And he's an honest person. He's really an honest 
person. He's a kind and nice and gentle human being that loves the creations and he smiles to people and he's able to help and if you're going to call him in the middle of the night he will ask for permission from his wife and he's going to run to help you and he's a nice and kind person. So he's not learning, he's not putting tefillin, he's not keeping Shabbat, he's not eating kosher, but he's amazing. What does it mean that he's amazing? It means that he's connected. Because whenever he feels that the good is calling him, so he's coming. When there's a need for charity, he will take out money from his wallet. When there's a need of grace, he will run and help. When there's a need of friendship, he will come with his shoulder. When there's a need of fighting for someone weak, he will come and defend. So in the end of the day, you will see that he's keeping a lot of Torah and mitzvot, without being connected and aware to the fact that he is keeping Torah and mitzvot. You cannot see that it's Torah and mitzvot because you need uniforms, you need tzitziot outside, you need long beard, you need tefillin, you need Shabbat. But Hashem, He's looking into the hearts. When he sees someone with a long beard, it can be the chief rabbi of the synagogue and it can be Santa Claus. <laughs> it, long white beard? Oh yeah, I know. Ho, 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 ho. No, you don't know. You don't know who is he. Long beard doesn't mean anything. It can be this kind of righteous and it can be this kind of a man and it also can be the devil with a long beard. You don't know. Long beard doesn't mean anything. Only the intention of your mind, the intention of your heart while having a beard or not having a beard, having a kippah or not having a kippah, only your intention matters. Only the intention of your heart means something to heaven. Because there can be a person that is willing to do whatever God will tell him and he's not aware to the idea of Torah mitzvot, so he won't keep it. And he doesn't know, he never heard about it, so the Creator won't judge him on it. Because he is a child that never been taught. And another person that learned and learned and did and whatever, and his heart is not aimed and tuned to holiness and purity and to the good and divine will of the Creator, just he's busy in his selfish desires and his mm, desire to win and to control and to abuse and to be on top and to have power is running him and leading him in life, he cannot be rewarded on millions of mitzvot that he so to speak. That's how he seems that he was keeping during his lifetime. He was not. He will be punished on representing Judaism in a negative way. Even though that he claimed to be so observant and pure. Rahmana li babai. The Creator, He wants your heart. And when you are connected to your heart, you're connected from within to the divine light of heaven. That divine light that is hidden for the righteous ones. And how you will become one of those righteous ones? When you will stop being judgmental about yourself. When you will stop criticizing yourself on when wo you woke up in the morning and how many pages have you learned and if you were able to do this or if you were able to do that. Stop judging yourself based on your physical power or your physical knowledge. Check your heart and ask yourself what was my intention while I was learning? What was my intention while I was talking? And ask from heaven to help you and to bring you to higher levels. And to always aim your heart to the right direction, to do only good, and to reveal the godliness in the world, that everyone will recognize the godliness that is already treasured and installed inside of them in the nature of their creation. Like that there is godliness in flowers and in vegetables and fruits and in the walls and in furnitures because the Creator gives life to His creation. There is life inside of you. It's the life of heaven. Connect yourself to your life. Connect yourself to who that gives you life and ask yourself, who am I? Who is that life that is alive inside of me? What is my mission? What should I do with the powers I have? What should I do with my talents, with my creativity, 
with my wisdom, with the power of my memory, with the power of my imagination, with my attraction to music, with my love to art, with my desire to see the views. What can I do with all that craziness that the Creator installed into my brain, into my heart? All those passions, all those holy desires, all those good ideas and dreams and hopes that I have. How can I aim them all, channel them all to heaven, to serve the Creator with them? And then you'll find the answer that you're looking for. Just by being religious, I'm telling you, it's a warning sign. Don't do that. Just to be religious, don't do that. It's not worth it. It won't give you anything. Just to be religious, not just to pretend that you are a Jewish Orthodox, don't do that. Don't do that. It won't help you. You're working for people. You're trying to, to satisfy people around you. You're slaves. You're making yourselves to be slaves of your masters. You are slaves of your fears. What the community will say, what my parents will say, what my parents-in-laws will say, what my wife will say, what my friends will say, what my chavruta will say. You're a liar. You are yourself putting yourself to be a liar, pretender, pretending to be something you're not. When you let people control your life, when you let your fears control your life, you're a liar. That's why you cannot pray. That's why you cannot learn. That's why you cannot breathe. That's why you're not happy. Because you're lying to yourself all day long. Because you let your fears control you and abuse you. And destroy your self-esteem and erase your real existence, your real being. By forcing yourself to fake no, I am. No, you don't. No, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes. <laughs> By nonsense. Lying. Plastering and faking reality. Don't do that. Be honest. Be honest. Now, if your heart really desires heaven and you don't know how to do that, call him. It's a free call. Call him. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I learned from my ancestors that when I need you, I should call you. So, can you give me a desire for learning? Because I really don't desire that at all. Can you help me to feel like going to the synagogue? Because like, I don't feel like doing it ever. Please, like, maybe in Shabbat. Can you help me in Shabbat? Like, at least, Sefer <laughs> Torah, please, Hashem. Like, I'm disconnected. I don't feel like it. Can you please, like, call me from the synagogue? Can you please let me find my way back into the gates of Gdusha, please? Like, I'm out there, Hashem, please, can you help me? That's an honest prayer. And Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. Be truthful. Tell Him, I heard about modesty, but like, it's hot, Hashem. Like, what do you want? Can you explain to me the importance of modesty? Because I heard it, I heard about it, and I'm very not inspired, Hashem. Like, but I'm willing to hear more about it. Can you please talk to me in my language? Like, that I'm gonna get it in the end of the day because, like, I'm not there. Please, Hashem. And that will be a prayer that will make you put another step forward in your journey. Another honest prayer, another simple step. Sometimes up, sometimes down. But you're in the right direction. You're facing heaven. You're in the right route. You're progressing with honesty, with purity. And then with your pure intention, you can find the hidden light that is waiting to those righteous ones. To those ones that are not afraid to fail. To those ones that are not afraid to look at the mirror and to admit I messed up. I disappointed myself and my beloved ones. And he is a strong person enough to admit I was wrong and to do tshuva and to apologize and to take responsibility on his shoulders and to keep on pushing his wagon one inch further and one inch further and to continue and to grow and not alone. To have enough time to pull all of your surroundings, all of your beloved ones, to tell them I'm with you. We're not going nowhere. We're here. We're growing together. Betoch Ami, inside my people, I live with you, waiting in patience, talking to everyone, 
having time for everyone, loving everyone, respecting everyone, appreciating and recognizing the hidden light that is treasured in everyone, looking into the hearts, into the souls of people and not let the faces and the colors and the money and the titles to stop you. To think that, oh, I know him, he's the owner of that place. Oh, I know him, he's praying in that sin. No, 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 you don't know anything about him, trust me. You don't know him at all. If you think that because that he's the owner, it means something about him, it doesn't mean anything. You don't have a clue about that person. You don't know him a bit. He's something else. With no connection to the place, with no connection to the synagogue, that's a soul. If you cannot see the soul, if you're not looking to find the soul, you don't know who you're dealing with, who you're talking to. You don't know. You're disconnected. Always when you're connected through external connections, you're disconnected. Or at least that your connection is very weak. But when you're connected from within, so then, Emuna with an H. Right? Don't forget Hashem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Muna project is a wonderful project that runs on air. Um, you don't believe me, I see, but we're running on air. It's a non-profit organization and we deserve that title and that name because we don't make no profits. <laughs> so please support us and support our activities. We're burning all of our money always on you guys. All the money is coming back to where it comes from, the, your generous hands, and it's coming back to your um, generous hands. With our videos, with our books, with our CDs, with all the content that we're spreading to the world online. And please support us and help us. And uh, from heaven, they will answer all your prayers and all your requests. Amen. Amen. Ken, Amen. Thank you.